errors and making errors out of sync with what we would like to do is how our nervous system is cued through very distinct biological mechanisms that something isn't going right and therefore certain neurochemicals are deployed that signal the neural circuits that they have to change. Making errors over and over and over again is the route to shaping your nervous system so that it performs better and better and better. The signal that generates the plasticity is the making of errors. It's the reaches and failures that signal to these to the nervous system that this is not working and therefore the shifts start to take place. And this is so fundamentally important because I think most people think, oh, well, practice is going to be, I have to access beginner's mind, which is a great concept, actually. It's about approaching things, expecting to make errors, which is great. I think I, I am a believer in beginner's mind. But people understandably get frustrated, like they're trying to learn a piece on the piano and they don't know, how, they can't do it, or they're trying to write a piece of code, or they're trying to access some sort of motor behavior and they can't do it. And the frustration drives them crazy and like, I can't do it, I can't do it. When they don't realize that the, the errors themselves are signaling to the brain and nervous system, something's not working. And of course, the brain doesn't understand the words, something isn't working. The brain doesn't even understand frustration as an emotional state. The brain understands the neurochemicals that are released, namely epinephrine and acetylcholine, but also, and we'll get into this, the molecule dopamine when we start to approximate the correct behavior just a little bit. And we start getting it a little bit right. So what happens is when we make errors, the nervous system kind of, I don't want to say freaks out because it's a very uh, mechanistic and controlled situation, but the nervous system starts releasing neurotransmitters and neuromodulators that say we better change something in the circuitry. And so errors are the basis for neuroplasticity and for learning. And I wish that this was um, more prominent, prominent out there. I guess this is why I'm saying it. Um, and humans do not like this feeling of frustration and, and making errors. The few that do, do exceedingly well in whatever pursuits they happen to be involved in. The ones that don't, generally don't do well. They generally don't learn much. And if you think about it, why would your nervous system ever change? Why would it ever change? Unless there was something to be afraid of, something that made us feel awful will signal that the nervous system needs to change or there's an error in our performance. So it turns out that the feedback of these errors, the reaching to the wrong location, starts to release a number of things, and now you've heard about them many times, but this would be epinephrine, it increases alertness, acetylcholine, focus, and this is why frustration that leads us to just kind of quit and walk away from the endeavor is the absolute worst thing, But the it, because if acetylcholine is released, it creates an opportunity to focus on the the error margin, the distance between what it is that you're doing and what it is that you would like to do. And then the nervous system starts to make changes almost immediately in order to try and get the behavior right. And when you start getting it even a little bit right, that third molecule comes online or is released, which is dopamine, which allows for the plastic changes to occur very fast. Now, this is what all happens very naturally in young brains, but in old brains, it tends to be pretty slow, except for in two conditions. So let me just pause and just say this. If you are uncomfortable making errors and you get frustrated easy, easily, if you leverage that frustration toward drilling deeper into the endeavor, you are setting yourself up for a terrific set of plasticity mechanisms to engage. But if you take that frustration and you walk away from the endeavor, you are essentially setting up plasticity to rewire you according to what happens afterwards, which is generally feeling pretty miserable. So now you can kind of start to appreciate why it is that continuing to drill into a process to the point of frustration, but then staying with that process for a little bit longer, and I'll define exactly what I mean by a little bit, is the most important thing for adult learning, as well as childhood learning, but adult learning in particular. Now, the Newton Lab did two very important sets of experiments. The first one was published in Nature, a very important study, which showed that juveniles can make these massive shifts in their map representations, meaning you can shift the visual world using visual prisms a huge amount, and very quickly, young 
young individuals can shift their representations of the world so that they learn to reach to the correct location. They get a lot of plasticity all at once. It happens very fast in the period of just a, a couple days. In adults, it gen- tends to be very slow and most individuals never actually accomplish the full map shift. They don't get the plasticity. And I, here we're talking about map shifts, but this could be um, learning a new language. This could be any number of different things that one were attempting. So what we're saying is what I already said before, which is that we learn very well as youngsters, but not as adults after 25. But Then what they did is they started making the increment of change smaller. So instead of shifting the the world a huge amount by putting prisms that shifted the the visual world all the way over to the right, they did this incrementally. So first they put on prisms that shifted it just a little bit, you know, just like seven degrees, I believe was the exact number. And then it was 14 degrees and then it was 28 degrees. And so what they found was that the adult nervous system can tolerate smaller and smaller errors over time, but that you can stack those errors so that you can get a lot of plasticity. Put simply, incremental learning as an adult is absolutely essential. You are not going to get massive shifts in your representation to the outside world. So how do you make small errors as opposed to big errors? Well, the key is smaller bouts of focused learning for smaller bits of information. It's a mistake to try and learn a lot of information in one learning bout as an adult. What these papers from the Knudsen lab show and what others have gone on to show is that the adult nervous system is fully capable of engaging in a huge amount of plasticity, but you need to do it in smaller increments per learning epoch or per learning episode. So how would you do this? Well, let's say, uh, for instance, I'm terrible at free throws. So let's say I wanted to learn free throws. I'm 45 years old, so I'm well past the you know 25 and under mark. I'm going to make errors. I'm going to make a lot of errors. If I go into learning free throws, knowing that errors are the gate to plasticity, well, then I feel a little bit better. But I still have to aim for the the rim of the basket or the the net. You know, basically. You know, showing how little I know about basketball. But I think I know the general themes around basketball. It involves a net, a backboard, and a, and a ball, of course. So I go to the free throw line and I'll throw. How long should I go? Well, until I'm hitting the point of frustration. And at that point, continuing probably for anywhere from 10 to 100 more trials should be my limit, right? That should be my limit if I want to improve some specific aspect of the motor behavior. And so The question then is, what should I be paying attention to? What should I be focusing on? Well, obviously trying to get the ball into the basket. But the beauty of motor learning is that the circuits for auditory and visual and motor more or less teach themselves. I don't necessarily have to be paying attention to, you know, exactly what, um, you know, the contact of my fingers with the ball or some random feature like whether or not I'm bending my knees or not. The key is to try a number of different parameters until I start to approximate the behavior that I want to get a little bit better and then trying to get consistent about that.